Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on unbiased and biased samples. Our objective is to determine whether sample methods are valid. And if we were to scan this lesson and define unbiased sample and biased sample, our definition of unbiased sample is a sample that is selected to represent the entire population. If we compare that to a biased sample, a biased sample is a sample in which one or more parts of the population are favored. And we will get into the meanings of those definitions and the applications of those here. In our real world link, a TV programming manager wants to conduct a survey to determine which reality television show is the favorite of viewers in a certain viewing area. He is considering the three samples shown. Draw an X through the two samples that would not fairly represent all of the people in the viewing area. Let's read our samples first. Sample 1, 100 people that are trying out for a reality show. Sample 2, 100 students at your middle school. Sample 3, every 100th person at a shopping mall. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cross off 1 and 2. And here's why. Explain why the two samples that you crossed out do not fairly represent all of the people in the viewing area. Well, 100 people trying out for a reality show are probably fans of that show. So people trying out for a reality show are probably fans of that show. I mean, you're not going to try out for, well, I'm not even going to go there. All right. What about sample two? Why is that not a great sample? 100 students at your middle school. Well, only a narrow age group is represented at the school. As much as I'm sure we'd all like to believe that our opinions are the ones that mean the most, um, only surveying uh, 100 students at a middle school would not be representative of the entire viewing area. And so now we get into our biased and unbiased samples. To get valid results, a sample must be chosen very carefully. An unbiased sample is selected so that it accurately represents the entire population. Two ways to pick an unbiased sample are listed below. We have the simple random sample, where each item or person in the population is likely to be chosen as another. An example of this, each student's name is written on a piece of paper. The names are placed in a bowl and names are picked without looking. That's pretty random. A systematic random sample is also unbiased. unbiased. The items or people are selected according to a specific time or item interval. So every 20th person is chosen from a list of students attending a school. Or every five minutes, I'm going to stop that pers a person and and I'll ask them questions, um, systematically choosing, uh, but it's still systematic random. Now, if we compare that to our biased samples, in a biased sample, one or more parts of the population are favored over others. Two ways to pick a biased sample are listed below. There's the convenience sample, where 
you're only picking people that are convenient or easy to pick. An example of this, to represent all the students attending a school, the principal surveys the students in one math class. Well, one math class is probably just one grade of students, and that's not going to be truly representative of the entire school. For a voluntary response sample, a description of this is uh, it involves only those who want to participate in the sampling, such as call this number to give us your opinion on blank, or go online and complete a survey and you may win a $200 gift card. Those are voluntary response samples, and as it says, as our listed example, students at a school who wish to express their opinions uh, complete an online survey. You know, if you're given a choice whether or not, sometimes if you say, okay, I'm going to take a survey of the school population, and I'm going to send it out to everybody, but it's voluntary, and whoever replies, replies. Well, unfortunately, sometimes when you with certain surveys, you only get certain opinions. You know, if it's a voluntary response, oftentimes you're only going to get back negative feedback. You know, who's going to volunteer information? Most of the time, people who want their voices heard. It's not always negative, but sometimes when you do voluntary responses, you will have a biased sample. So for our first guided example, Determine whether the conclusion is valid and justify your answer. A random sample of students at a middle school shows that 10 students prefer listening to rock, 15 students prefer listening to hip hop, and 25 students prefer no music while they exercise. It can be concluded that half the students prefer no music when they exercise. Well, before we can justify that conclusion, let's look at the sample. It was told we were at a random sample. And since it's a random sample and it looks like 25 out of 50 students preferred no music, we can say it's unbiased. And if the sample is unbiased and the conclusion is mathematically correct, we can say it's valid. We have a couple more guided examples to look at here. Determine whether each conclusion is valid, justify your answer. Every tenth person who walks into a department store is surveyed to determine his or her music preference. Out of 150 customers, 70 stated that they prefer rock music. The manager concludes that about half of all customers prefer rock music. Well, let's look at the sample itself. Every tenth person who walked in. Well, that's systematic random, as it says right here, unbiased systematic random. And 70 out of 150 is just a little bit under a half, and he's saying about a half, so this is actually a valid conclusion. Moving on to the third guided example. The customers of a music store are surveyed to determine their favorite leisure time activity. The results are shown in the graph. The store manager concludes that most people prefer to listen to music in their leisure time. Let's look at the sample. Customers of a music store are surveyed, and 85% of them preferred to listen to music. Well, if customers are going into a music store, it's usually not to buy a baseball bat. And so it's not a valid survey. It's not a valid conclusion, as it says here. The customers of a music store probably like to listen to music in their leisure time. That makes sense. The sample is a biased convenience sample since all of the people surveyed are in one specific location. It's convenient for the music store to take a survey in their store. Um, so the conclusion is not valid. As we look at our only got it question of this lesson, a radio station asks its listeners to indicate their preference for one of two candidates in an upcoming election. 72% of the listeners who responded preferred candidate A, so the radio station announced that candidate A would win the election. Is the conclusion valid? Justify your answer. Well, let's look at our sample. The radio station asked its listeners, 72% who responded? That's a key giveaway for this being a voluntary response sample. And that alone is going to make this a biased 
survey. And so based on that alone, we can say the conclusion is not valid. Additionally, the population is only the listeners of the radio station. That that population doesn't represent the entire listening area or whoever's voting in the election. Some people might not like that music, or if it's a talk radio, if it's a, you know, a conservative talk radio station or a liberal talk radio station, it may not truly give a great picture. So if we say something like the population is restricted to listeners of that radio station. So there's a lot of things wrong with that survey. I mean, if they wanted to come out and conclude that 72% of our listeners prefer candidate A, so 72% of the people who listen to this radio station, that would actually still be invalid because it was voluntary response. So again, alone with this being voluntary response, it's a biased and it's not valid. But you can still poke holes through this by saying, well, it's only restricted to listeners of that radio station. Moving on, using sampling to predict. Now, a valid sampling method uses unbiased samples. If a sampling method is valid, you can make generalizations about the population. In our last guided example, example four, a store sells three types of pants, jeans, capris, and cargos. The store workers survey 50 customers at random about their favorite type of pants. The survey responses are indicated at the right. If 450 pairs of pants are ordered, how many should be jeans? Before we jump right into the question and try to solve and set up a proportion or set up an equation like we did in our previous lesson, we need to make sure the sample method is valid. If it's not valid, we're not solving the question. Well, the store workers survey 50 customers at random. Well, this means it is a simple random sample since the customers were randomly selected. So the sample method is valid. Again, if we conclude that it is a valid sample method, then we can continue on in our question. If our sample method is invalid, then just simply write the sample method is you know, invalid, it's a biased sample because yada, yada, yada you don't, don't need to set up a proportion to solve. But since it is valid, we do need to answer this last question is, if 450 pairs of pants are ordered, how many should be jeans? Well, 25 out of 50, which is 50% of the customers, preferred jeans. So we need to find 50% of 450. So if you take 0 0.5 or 0 0.50 times 450, you get 225, which is the number of jeans that could be ordered. You could also set up 25 over 50 and simplify that to 1 half and write a proportion equals x over the 450. And you could cross multiply and solve 2x equals 450, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 225. That ratio and proportion method works as well. That is it for this lesson on unbiased and biased samples. Good luck.